Hello everybody, Mikey with Hologram here, and in this video, we're going to be going over the first part of the devices page. So let's get started. Um, as you uh, remember, whenever you log into the Hologram dashboard, the first page you have access to is the devices page. So this is kind of the control hub for all the devices you have. And I like to break it down into a couple sections. The first section is the tags. So tags are pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. They're um, data markers that you use to tag devices then be able to filter uh, based on the different tags. So here you can see that we have a Nova tag, uh, an active tag, and a dash tag. And you can see that when I click the dash tag, every device that's tagged with this dash tag will appear and all the devices that don't have it will disappear. Um, if I then add Nova, you can see that Mr. Simmons Nova uh, popped up in there. So it's just a way to filter and organize your devices. Um, below that, you have the export CSV button. And actually, I'm going to um, remove all the tags here. And the export CSV button actually allows you to export all the device information. So if you prefer to manipulate all of this using Excel or Google Sheets, you can do that um, and it'll make your life a little bit easier. Now the next section of the devices page um, is the main header bar. And in the main header bar, we have the manage section, the usage section, the mass action buttons, which are these four buttons over here. And then these buttons to the right, which are activate SIM, create organization, and search. So let's start with usage. Um, the usage page shows you the usage for all your devices. Um, all the individual devices have their own little usage page. So I'm going to go over this in this section um, in detail. And in the next section, I'm going to just go over the main uh, highlights. So here you can see that we have a recent usage page. And in the recent usage uh, graph, uh, we see that data spans from about January, February, and is starting to inch up on March. And let's say I want to take a better look at February. What I can do is I can just highlight the information I want to see. And when I let go, that'll actually be zoomed in. So if I want to get a better picture of that, I can highlight that again. And then I can see the individual uh, data sessions that uh, are part of the recent usage. So you can see that here, uh, Mr. Simmons Dash used about 200 kilobytes of data February 20th at 3.45 local time. Um, same thing here, so you can see that Mr. Simmons Nova now used about 400 kilobytes of data on the same day uh, at about the same time. So Mr. Simmons was probably experimenting with something or uh, trialing something out. Now, if we move to the section below that, uh, we have the general report section. And all of this is controlled by this uh, w window section that allows us to select a start date and an end date for the window that we're viewing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way to January 1st all the way through March 31st. And here you can see that there's a big data spike for February, and we have all those February data sessions. Uh, but in January and in March, we don't have too much. Um, if I want to be more granular, I can hit the daily button, and you can see uh, the daily breakdown. So you can see that Mr. Simmons had a busy day. It seems February 20th. Um, he was doing some heavy experimentation with his Nova and his Dash, and we have some smaller data sessions um, spread out throughout the month. Now this is the graphical view. If I change to uh, the table view, I can actually see all those different data sessions and uh, what was part of it. So here you have Mr. Simmons Dash. You can see that uh, on January 1st, or sorry, January 3rd, there was a 34 kilobyte charge. You can also see the tags or the tag IDs for those devices. Um, if we scroll down, you can see that here's a charge for the Nova. So it's just a different way to view the same information. And again, if you want to export to CSV, you have this button here uh, to manipulate data. For example, if you prefer to use Python or um, some more, a more powerful data processing tool to investigate and get a better picture of where your usage is going. Um, going back to the graphical page, you can see that we also have a total data usage for that uh, time frame, as well as average data per SIM. So if you have a huge fleet of devices and you want to see the average usage per SIM because you want to for example, make some modifications to your plan, this would be a great page to do that. I'm um, scrolling down. Uh, this information, again, is still constrained by the time frame that we set up in the report section. Uh, we have a pie chart, and this pie chart breaks down your SIM activation charges, your monthly renewal charges, and your data charges. And we can see beside data charges that we have a little blue eye, and this little blue eye is just an information button, so we can click on there, and you can see that here it's telling us billing charges are only performed once uh, 25 cent threshold is reached. So just a little more information. And again, this view is easy to um, is easy on the eyes and helpful to see where the money is going. How much of it is going to monthly plans versus data versus SIM activations. You can see the total charges for the time period. So you can see that 
Mr. Simmons spent about $157 between January and March. And you can also have quick access to this to the billing section that we discussed in an earlier video, again, linked below if you want that. Um, and the final part of this is the total SIM count or the SIM, SIM count breakdown. Here we can see that Mr. Simmons has four total SIMs of which three were pre-existing, so before this time frame, one is new, and three of them are using data. Um, so that pretty much wraps up the usage page. So now let's go to the manage page. Again, this is the default page, so this is where a lot of the action happens, so I saved it for last. Um, so here we can see we have the activate SIM button. So if I click on that, it'll, show, it'll take me to the activate uh, the SIM activation uh, section, and uh, my colleague Ben Lampert, who's the head of uh, Sales engineering actually has a great video on this, which again, we're gonna link below if you wanna go through the activation uh, process. But there's again, guides on our webpage if you want more information on that. Um, quick rundown, you enter the SIM number. You can actually enter multiple SIM numbers split up by commas. Um, you can then select uh, specific promo codes if you have them. Uh, you can add custom prefixes to the SIM names if you wanna do that in mass and assign tags, again, all through the activation portal. Um, Scrolling down, you can see that we have the data plan. So uh, every personal organization has one developer plan. We can see that Mr. Simmons has used it up already, which is why that option is grayed out. But here we choose if we want pay as you go or monthly, and then we can see all the options that we have for monthly. Again, I don't want to change too much on Mr. Simmons' account, so I'm going to leave it as is. But um, scrolling down, you can see the different coverage areas. So uh, right now it's on zone one. Zone two, you'll see, includes a couple more countries, uh, including Canada. And if you want to see the list of those countries, there's a list of countries button up here to the right that you can click and view that information. Um, lastly, we have the cost summary. So this will show you like what these changes are going to cost you. Um, so you can see that here by changing it to zone two, uh, the data cost is going to go up to 85 cents per megabyte. Base cost is going to be 40 cents per month, SMS 30. Um, and the preview of the immediate cost is going to be zero. Um, so I'm actually going to cancel out of this because we're not activating any devices. Um, this will take us back to the device page. Again, we're still in the manage view. And I just wanna highlight the create organization button. So this is a different way to create organization. So we went over it in our last video, but um, here you can do that as well. You can create your, your organization here. Um, you can give it a name. Um, if you wanna transfer all the information, so all the devices from the current org, so your personal org to this new org, you can click on this checkbox. Um, clicking on the second checkbox will actually transfer all the billing information as well. So if you just wanna uh, to just clone everything and move it from one organization to the next. Just click on those two check boxes. Um, here we also have the option of adding a credit card. So again, for all my Amazon people and Adafruit Sparkfun people, you know exactly uh, how this works. Um, if you decide, you can also set up payments later by clicking on this button. You hit create organization, and that'll actually take you to that organization and ask you to invite collaborators. Um, so here we just enter their emails. If your collaborators have a hologram account, it'll just send them an invite to the organization. If they don't have a hologram account, it'll actually invite them to hologram and then also give them access to the organization. Um, so again, uh, very, very helpful uh, tools here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Mr. Simmons here. Um, again, it'll take us back to the manage page, uh, which is what we're looking at anyway. So now we're gonna take a deep dive into the mass action buttons. And this allows us to perform uh, actions on a bunch of devices at once. I believe it's up to 10 at the moment. Um, and essentially what you do is you just click on the check marks uh, beside the buttons you wanna perform a mass action on. You also have the select all or select none options. So I'm just gonna uh, say, hey, let's just choose these two. And up here under manage, you can see that in mass, we can transfer these devices to an organization, pause and resume data, enable or disable tunneling for space bridge, and even set data limit limits. So again, uh, if you have dozens of devices, uh, this is super powerful. Instead of having to go one by one, you can do this all through the dashboard in mass. Uh, same thing with tags, so you can tag things in mass and actually send messages. So I'll go through the send messages later on in the next video, so the deep dive into message sending. But just so you know, you can do it in mass uh, through the mass action buttons. So I'm gonna cancel out of here. Um, the last uh, item in this part of the of the dashboard is the search bar. So if you want to search your devices, you can do that as well. So for example, if I want to search all the devices that have the name Nova, I can do that. Um, so pretty standard search function. Now the last thing I want to go over is just uh, this table here. So as you can see, it shows the device, the usage, 
when it was last active, the plan, the zone, and the phone number. But for example, if you want to see all the sims on a specific plan, what you can do is you can click here and filter, or you can just click on the word plan and it'll um, shift them alphabetically. So this applies to all the different columns. So if you want to see which device used the most data or least data, you can just click on usage um, and it'll quickly format that. Again, reminder, you do have that CSV export button if you want to do any more complex uh, data manipulation. So that pretty much sums up this video. In the next video, we're going to do a deep dive into a single device here on the device page. So tune in for that. See you later.